the jungle. Many followers of Super League will already be familiar with this place and that's because last season Castleford were in the Super League. This year they've been in a different league, but has the ground followed too? Well, not much has changed here since Castleford were last in the top flight. They still know how to put on a good show and it's still a popular day out for supporters, home or away. There's a sense of atmosphere, family and community. It's always very friendly, there's friendly banter, but people are, are very friendly and it's, it's a nice place to be to get that atmosphere. You can tell it used to be Super League, it's a good setup. There's children, things for kids to do. And a lot of things, you've got things to spend your money on, which Rugby League, I mean, it needs more people to come and spend the money on. There's a lot of activities for children and it's all... There's a lot of things for like adults as well and it's, it's a nice ground, yeah. We've tried to maintain Super League standards in everything and uh, certainly the, the match day experience is not that much different to what it was in Super League and obviously with a winning side this year uh, it's been greater than probably what it was in Super League the previous year when we did suffer quite a few losses down here. Off the pitch, Castleford have kept the Super League mentality. There's plenty to do outside of the ground. There's plenty of pre-match entertainment but it's still an old-fashioned style of rugby league ground. There's one small stand for sitting down and the rest, as you can see, is all standing. Of course, that's how many fans like it. But they're also aware of the ground shortcomings and what needs to be done to put them right. What do you think is wrong with it? Uh, that wooden stand for a start. That back end, put a stand over there, put a roof on there, to get all this new up near right stadium this. It's difficult to get to because there's not very much parking around there, so I've had to park right up out into town. Probably yeah. toilet facilities. I think, I think they've improved on virtually everything else. The toilets, or lack of enough of them, is one of the few negatives about this ground and one they're fully aware of. But they do get a big thumbs up from me for something else. Ladies lose, I'll go and check what they're like, but most importantly, whether they've got you know what inside. They say they're a big family club and they provide the baby changing facilities to prove they mean it. The stewards here are among some of the friendliest I've ever met. And when it comes to value for money, it's a good, cheap day out. But will it stay that way should they win today? Well, we've always tried to be the sort of the, the lowest priced club in Super League, the best value club in Super League. We've always had that as a, a target of ours, so I don't think that's going to change. We'll look at what other people are doing, but very much we want to look after the fans. We know to get more people through the gate, it's not all about charging higher prices, it's about being giving value for money. So we'll work hard on customer service, but also we've got to put a good side together. That's the key ingredient. From tropical conditions in Yorkshire to rain clouds in Cumbria and the home of the other Super League wannabes, Whitehaven. Nestled between the hills of this seaside town is the recreation ground. Their visitors today had travelled 148 miles for three hours to get here. And then the heavens open. Why does it always rain on me? Well, there can't be many ground set in surroundings quite as pleasant as this, especially when the sun comes out. But your problem starts when it's raining. Much of this ground is without any wet weather cover, and it made for a damp start for the visiting fans. What do you think of the ground? Uh, poor. <laughs> Very poor for this kind of weather. No cover for anybody. The only cover you've got is down there. This ground is not good enough for Super League. Hey, it's fairly easy to find, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Just could do a, another stand building up down that side, it'd be all right then. And you know, that's exactly what Whitehaven have planned. You can see from looking around the ground that it, it's not up to standard for Super League. Uh, we are, in the short term, well, playing at Carlisle United's ground at Brunton Park. But in the long term, and when I say long term, I mean certainly next season, there will be a new grandstand going on the popular side, which is behind us, which will seat a thousand people, and we'll have the facilities that we need for Super League. They certainly have their work cut out for them. There are simply not enough loos, and some are very outdated, but they do have baby changing facilities. There are plenty of refreshment kiosks, and the staff are very friendly and welcoming. Entrance prices are great value for money, but may have to change if they get into Super League. Tickets will have to rise, obviously, for Super League. I mean, we charge £10 this season in the National League. We're probably one of the, one of the cheaper teams in the National League. But then again, that's down to the demographics of the area we live in. And that, and we look to give our, our spectators value for money. Whitehaven have won one major prize to get them this close to Super League. If they win today, that's when the work really starts to get their home ready for the big time. So, Super League...
Steve, this time last year you came here and within a matter of minutes of reaching Super League. Do you think that experience will help you this afternoon? We'll soon find out, won't we? It's, um, you know, that's in the past now. We can't really do anything from that, but uh, you'd like to think you, you, you learn from experiences like that. I certainly have as a coach, and, and hopefully the players have done. You don't always get what you deserve in rugby league, but you do you think that Whitehaven deserve to be in Super League? Well, we deserve to play in Super League and be in Super League if we win this game today. You know, you've got to be there and you've got to be there on merit. And we've had a great season so far, and what these players have, have achieved for themselves and the club has been absolutely fantastic. But another 18 minutes now, and, and whoever wins this game will deserve to be in Super League. I've got to say, Steve, you do look very calm, are you? I might be calm on the on the outside, but uh, a, lot, a lot of nerves. I think uh, if I said I wasn't nervous, I'd be telling lies. But uh, you know, preparation's gone really well, and the lads are looking forward to it. And hopefully, we can pull it off. Good luck, Steve. Thank you. Dave, this game has been billed as the most important match in Castleford's history. How confident are you that you and your players can handle that pressure? Yeah, very confident. We've had a really good week. Um, boys are boys are really, really keen to go today and they can't wait to get it on. It's only a couple of weeks since you last played Whitehead and you look like you had it in the bag but lost. What have you learned from that game in the recreation ground? Yeah, just that, you know, we, we know that we've got to compete for 80 minutes. Um, they, they got a lot of ball in that second half and we can't afford to give them too much ball so we've got to make sure that we, we control the ball and get equal share of ball. You have played in one big final this year against Hull KR. I know you lost that but has that experience helped for an occasion like this which is going to be packed at witness? Yeah I think it will. I think um, you know even though we did lose that game we uh, we played a, a pretty good 40 minutes there and, and we let ourselves down a bit in the back end of that game but um, I'm sure that'll help all the boys with their, with their nerves and with you know playing in such a big atmosphere. All the best today Dave. No worries thank you. Goes on the line. It's Whitehaven against Castleford, the top two in National League One. It's their grand final, and who wants to get in to the big time? Well, the Whitehaven dressing room, they've won their last eight matches to clinch pole position in National League One and secure this place at the Halton Stadium. Last defeat, it was a shocker in July, 60 points to 18 at Halifax. Their only other setback came at Castleford in June, 24 points to 42. Castleford. They've lost Michael Egar, but they have got the likes of Johnny Hepworth, Brad Davis and Adrian Bowles waiting to come off the bench. I wonder whether Castleford can make it back and continue the recent trend that has seen the relegated club, with the exception of Halifax, make an immediate return to Super League. Their supporters are here in number. But can Whitehaven, with all their silly wigs, can they make it into Super League? in 2006. Workington, the last presence from Cumbria that were there in Super League One all those years ago in 1996. Fantastic atmosphere. The crowd is a sellout. Over 13,000 people inside and Catholic have travelled in numbers to be here to cheer, they hope, their team back into the big time. Darren, I know you have a little fancy for the Tigers, don't you? Like I say, I just think some of the key players have a game left in them, a big game left in them, and I think that they can um, can pull it out. If they don't pull it out, if one of them doesn't perform, Whitehaven will win it. Whitehaven go through things very methodically, you know, don't come up with many errors and finish with a kick chase. What Whitehaven personally, I think, suffer on is that they can't score long-range tries, exception of Craig Calvert, who is very quick. Castleford can attack from anywhere. You know, Brad Davis has the vision, he has a kicking game, and that's what they've got to work on. Paul Hanforth being on the bench is, I think, a big plus, because he can play at nine, he can play at six or seven, so if any, anything happens there. And again, Adrian Bowles. We saw Andrew Johns in Super League. Adrian Bowles has come to this one. Can he make the same impact? Only time will tell, and today is the day. Can I ask you to rewind the mind 12 months? What did it mean to you to win here and it take Leon? It meant everything to me as a coach and the club had been there on many occasions and failed and all the pressures was on. We'd won the Arriva Trophy as it was then, we'd won the National League One, but this was the big pot of gold that everybody wanted around the town, the directors, the players and myself as a coach and I was lucky enough to succeed it and that was the high point of my coaching career up to now and this is what Steve will be wanting, this is what Dave Woods will be wanting and this is what makes it a very, very special occasion. Last time we saw Castleford on Sky Sports, Steve, the National Rail Cup final up in Blackpool, they were found wanting by Hull Kingston Rovers. Yeah, especially in the second half, you know, they control that first 40 minutes and perhaps they've learned a lesson. I'm sure they would have. And in re reference to what I was saying earlier, in as much that, you know, some of the players from Castleford, although they went full-time professional, 
when they got demoted from the Super League, a lot of the players decided they would play this season for a very low contract indeed, on the hope that they would get there. And this is their final day where they know that they can not only go up into Super League, but they can also establish themselves with a very, very secure contract, maybe two, maybe three years for the future. And that's important. And it's also important for one of the most experienced that we have in this league. And of course, I'm referring to the standoff Brad Davis. Now, Brad Davis has made it quite clear he will retire after this game. He wants to become a coach. I know he's said it before in the past, but I honestly feel that if he can help the Tigers to victory today, he will be hoping that the Castleford club will say, we want you on board as a coach. And I think it would be a wise move. They brought him back to steady the ship. He's certainly done that. But for Whitehaven, you have to look to the fullback, Gary Broadman. He'll be the man that'll be trying to link in from into the three quarters. And as far as I'm concerned, he could be the match winner for Whitehaven. There's not going to be much in it. Not much in it. And uh, Whitehaven boasts the coach of the year in Steve McCormack. But he says he would willingly swap that accolade for the victory here over the Castle of the Tigers that would guarantee Whitehaven a place in the Engage Super League next season. This is their team. Gary Broadbent is the fullback. The three quarters are Craig Talbot, David Seeds, McNannan and Wesley Wilson. It's Leroy Joe and Joel Penny at halfback. The forwards, it's uh, Ryan Tandy, Carl Sice and David Patialofa up front. Spence Miller, Howard Hill and Aaron Lester is the Whitehaven captain at loose forward. And the bench is occupied by Carl Rudd, Aaron Summers, Craig Chambers and Mark Jackson. The coach, of course, is Steve McCormack. Now the cast of the Tigers, Michael Platt, the fullback, Wayne Price, we remember him from Super League, and Michael Shenton, Johnny Hepworth and Damian Blanche. Brad Davis is there wearing six and Andrew Henderson is the captain. He's the brother of Ian Henderson, the hooker at Bradford Bulls. Adam Wattini, Aaron Smith and Richard Fletcher, the front row, Tom Hockey, Steve Crouch and Dion Bird. And the bench occupied by Paul Hanford, Craig Huby, Adrian Vowles, there he is, and Frank Wattini. Coach is Dave Woods. Well, it's an important day and we have the uh, pre-match presentations taking place. Uh, Jane Fenwick is there, the marketing director of the LHF Health Plan, shaking hands. Philip Hindle is just behind her, and uh, also out there is Richard Lewis, the executive chairman of the Rugby Football League. Nervous moments, these. The players and the coaches, Darren, you now you want it on. You want the game to get going, don't you? You want the game to get going. The coaches' work is done. You've had them all week. You've spoke to them all week. The ones with nerves, you've tried to calm them down. The ones who's laid back, you've tried to pick them up. And then it all comes down to what the players are going to take in, what the players are remembering, what you've told them to do, and get into that half-time before you can actually speak to the players again. The messages that you send out, they've got to be limited. The players cannot take it on board under this intensity, under the pressure on, they're out there. And as you say, it's 17 players, and they could make the coach a super coach, or they could make the coach a loser. <laughs> it's a very, very fine line today, what's going to happen. We, we talk about penalty shootouts in soccer. The entire season's work goes on the line, Steve-O, in these 80 minutes now. It certainly does, and the most important thing is, uh, as Darren has already intimated to, the players don't like this. They don't want it. They want to come out of the sheds. They want to get in with it. They want to make sure that they just have their minds on their job. It's a noisy, noisy atmosphere at the Holton Stadium. There will be a, a two-minute silence, though, or a minute silence, in memory of the passing of two rugby league stalwarts. Sam Shepherd from Oldham is the senior international referee, and Ray Taylor, president of the Rugby Football League in 2000, chairman of Rochdale Hornets, a council member of the league, and National League Forum member. We're going to mark their passing uh, with a moment's silence before this game. And after that, we will hear from our commentators. Steve-O will be up there, Phil Clark, of course, and we'll have the lead commentator, Bill Arthur.
impeccably observed minute silence in honour of two men who contributed so much to uh, the game of rugby league. And now Castleford Tigers and Whitehaven prepare to contribute to what has already been a pretty spectacular afternoon, Phil. A couple of 28-26 results. We're going to get another one. Well, every chance out that these tall sides evenly matched. You just hope that the players are thinking about the game and not the occasion. It's very difficult with everything that's gone on, the media in the localities and the fans and the family and friends all talking about the importance of this game. As a player, you've just got to focus on doing the little things you do well to help your team win games. Mick Nannin preparing to get the game underway. I think they picked that up off the M6 on the way down to the ground. And he does go for a, go. a lot of height when he kicks off. Steve Ganson gets us underway. There it goes. And a whole season, a whole future perhaps, is on the line for these two clubs. As we've heard already, Castleford saying it's the biggest game in the club's history. That is saying something for a club with the history of the Castleford Tigers. But... They are desperate to get back to Super League, just as Whitehaven are desperate to reach that elite level as well. But it's the Tigers in possession first in this change blue strip. And here's Dion Burge, hugely experienced, as are so many of this Castleford side. None more so than Brad Davis, who puts that little kick in, and there's one for Gary Broadbent to field. And Broadbent, like Davis, has been around for a while, not quite so long, Gary Broadbent. He's only 28 years old as opposed to the 37 years of age of Brad Davis. But that just epitomizes, Phil, the sort of experience there is out there. We're not talking about rookies here. We're not, no. But the uh, players have got to play, haven't they? No matter what experience you've got, you've got to perform on the day. Ryan Tandy now just takes it forward for White Devon. Tandy, one of uh, three players with South Sydney connections in this White Haven side. They found a home in Cumbria. That's the fifth tackle. That's a great defensive set, and that's a big hit from Richard Fletcher that laid Carl Sice out. He felt that. Michael Platt brings that ball back for the Castleford Tigers. Here is Wayne Price. Castleford, of course, got off to a flying start when they played Haven at the recreation ground just a couple of weeks ago, thought they were, they were on their way at the first attempt of this grand final. How wrong were they? They ended up losing that one 32-22. So Whitehaven know that they can beat this side. It's uh, two each so far this season in all competitions. Haven on the, uh, Castleford on the attack. Haven defending on their own 20 meter liners. Davis puts a cross field kick in. Steve Crouch is chasing that. And fortunately, it comes back to the bulky figure of McNannan. Well, again, both sides conscious of the kicking ability of their opponents. They're attempting, whenever possible, to put pressure on the opponents when it comes to that kick. When these sides last met, three of the, the first three tries of the match all came from kicks, so it's an important part of both sides' armory. But a wayward pass, fortunately, finds its way to Leroy Joe, then Howard Hill, and they're moving it now out to the speedster, Craig Calvert, and Calvert's just taken into touch. Great defence that time by Damien Blanche. Well, Calvert is a threat if he gets away. And they weren't going to let him. Well, if you've got a guy in the wing who can run, you get him the ball whenever you can. And he's supposed to got to back himself. He tries to take on the outside, Calvert, but he's well caught by Blanche and just dragged over the sideline. To see Whitehaven though with that adventurous play going the ball to the wing. Dave Woods, the uh, Castleford coach, there is saw inscrutable as Platt goes out on. He's in touch as well. Well, from one wing to the other, and this time it's great defence. And Steve McCormack applauds that work from his side. Well, defence on top, isn't it? He's a quick player, Platt, and he'll take it on when he can. Maybe a touch unfortunate. Man Nanning drags him to the ground. You could argue that the tackle had been completed at that point as a stationary for a second. Whitehaven, second effort. They get possession back now, or should do from this scrum. Not even four minutes on the clock, and yet we've already had some excitement here. Both the wings and there's a bit of a, a judo throw from Adam Watine there on Joel Penny. 
that is Joel Penny. It was Carl Seif who was tackled. Now here's Ryan Tandy. Tandy. On the 40 meter line, and that's the first penalty of the game. Well, penalties in the cup final when they played Hulk are uh, perhaps the downfall of the Casper Tigers. They'll be hoping today to restrict the number they concede. Just holding down on Ryan Tandy. I don't think the coach agrees. It was the right decision. A little down in my mind, and the man with the whistle, Steve Ganson, that the hooker was all over the man with the ball. Here come Haven then from the tap. Wes Wilson takes that ball in. Sice now. Finds Spencer Miller. Miller, about 18 metres out. Tandy was a dummy runner. Joel Penny straight across the face to Howard Hill. Hill well tackled by his opposite number, Steve Crouch. Leroy Joe now pops the ball up. Good offload, but oh, snapped up superbly by Tom Hockey. Reacted very well to that loose pass just before Joel Penny could get to it. Wow, what a start, Bill. Uh, great thinking by Hockey there to read that offload, intercepting it, but the intensity of the defence from Whitehaven, superb start here now, really forcing the Castleford side to work to get out of their danger zone. Wayne Price making some good yards for the Castleford Tigers until he runs into the Haven defence. Now, Aaron Smith, former Bradford Bull. He's tackled just inside his own half. On the last, Davis puts the kick over the top and <laughs> Calvert juggling with that ball and then bringing it back across the field. Chased down by the kicker, Brad Davis. Broadbent, nowhere for him to go. Good defence from the Tigers. Dion Bird was there. Here's David Seeds. David Fatia Loper now just over the 30 meter line and Haven just struggling to get out of their own half at the moment in the face of some determined Tigers defense and that was well it's <laughs> lucky it stuck somewhere along the line it did in the end for Mick Nannin and then Adam Watine comes storming in to help Johnny Hepworth I think they've been encouraged to try and shift the ball there by a compressed castle for defense meant that they haven't gone forward really and effectively gone wide and now kicked straight into the arms of Michael Platt He's a quick player. Look how he returns it. Platt, former Salford player, experienced Super League and teamed up with his former coach, Steve McCormack, at Whitehaven, where he's at, uh, at Castleford. He was at Salford under Steve McCormack. Career has really blossomed now. His bird, and they can't keep control of that ball, Damien Blanche. Bit of a scramble pass from Dion Bird, just forcing that one. Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? Because they're trying to play the game with a greater pace and intensity than Whitehaven. Sometimes when you try that, mistakes come all again over the sideline. But I would say in the opening uh, seven minutes, they've probably dominated the game. Whitehaven gasping here now, get a breather while the ball comes back. I think, Phil, like the previous game, Dewsbury and Badley, I think both sides are realising instead of making an arm wrestle, they want to give it plenty of air. We've seen a beautiful game. And now they're giving us another treat. Whitehaven and Castleford. But surely both coaches will be saying, let's just settle it down. Let's get that kick and chase sorted out. Here's Fatia Lofa. Just inside that Castleford 40. Joel Penny. Bit of a fitness out from Penny. And then Howard Hill can't take that pass. And another error, a bit of a nervy start as well. Yeah, the error carried a little high for both teams liking to start the 10 minutes. They rather want to be just completing and getting to the kick, really. Steve Crouch has lost that ball. I wonder, Bill, a, a sign of the tension, nerves, or maybe anxiety going into this game, because for these two sides to commit this number of mistakes in the opening 10 minutes, very unlike both of them. Well, they probably realise, and rightly so, that they need points on the board. We know it'll get down to the fitness levels in the final quarter, but to get off to a good start, especially if you can put a try, converted with the six points on the board, it, it is a real lift for your outfit. 
Gary Broadbent trying for all he's worth to get his side just an extra couple of yards there and he does now Leroy Joe he's missed only one game all season Leroy Joe really solid performer as is this guy Ryan Tandy and Tandy bounces off one on his knees eventually Aaron Summers pins him down now the captain Aaron Lester Lester out to Mick Nannin he's a big Bruce of a guy is Nanny. Look more at home in the pack as Wes Wilson tries a little chip and chase, but Clack very calm. I think you've got to be a bit smarter than that, haven't you? The fullback's going to be standing in that position. There is some pace in this Castleford side. Wayne Price is one of them, Clack likewise. He chips it over there. I mean, that's where the fullback stands, isn't it? Maybe a kick to the corner. Would have given him a better chance. Adam Watee, now Richard Fletcher. Signed from Hull after six seasons in the black and white. And has made a big contribution to this Castleford campaign. The kick from Davis pushing Wesley Wilson back. Wilson who scored two tries in that memorable grand final last season against Lee Centurions. It wasn't enough. It was agony for Haven. They don't want to go through that again this afternoon. They want to get there. The first attempt, Howard Hill. Back up, back up. Sice now. And Tandy has lost that ball, play on. And another mistake. And a mistake, the product of Castleford's effort in defence there. From the kick that went down from Davis, you just saw the effort of the side to restrict Whitehaven's goal forward they said look if you're going to come out of your heart you're going to have to do something special or work damn hard and they held him in there and forced him to stay from Tandy and you can see quite clearly that Tandy was trying to offload no problems about that at all and they're just calming things down a little bit the official Mr Ganson you've got to get away and get back in the action well I think off the ball there might have been a little bit of a disagreement between Aaron Lester and Tom Hockey spotted by one of the touch judges here's Johnny Hepworth this will be his last game for the Council of the Tigers he's off to play for Leinster Rugby Union Graham Steadman has persuaded him to uh, cross the sea so Hepworth will be hoping to go out on a high Castleford looking for the first points of this game as Adam Watine comes down the middle and meets a haven wall in the shape of David Fatialofa but still Castleford come with Davis and Davis is taken high that was Aaron Lester and Steve Ganson the last time we saw one of these did not hesitate Phil he knows where the red card is doesn't it the back right hand pocket but I just think that was a high tackle in the penalty well it was more of a grab I'm not so sure that he was a swinging arm he sort of goes for him okay so tell that to Adrian Morley tell that to Stephen Kearney Oh, come on, that was more of a grab rather than a swinging arm. There was no movement with the arm whatsoever. Leave it to me, mate. Surely he won't get the red for this. And fair dues to Brad Davis. He was uh, up on his feet instantly and just had a word with Aaron Lester to say there was no hard feeling. And Andy Henderson, the Castleford captain, just has a word with Steve Ganson. In the end, it'll come down to two points for Richard Fletcher, maybe. Just when you see a high shot and Steve Ganson's in the vicinity, you immediately see red, don't you? <laughs> well, you certainly do, but you've got to draw the arm back and aim it into it for it to be malicious. That speaks to voice <laughs> experience, eh? Yeah. It was a grab. It was high. Deserved the penalty. No more. And it'll cost Whitehaven two points. Richard Fletcher. Gets the first points on the board. Whitehaven nil, Castleford Tigers two. And Brad Davis obviously feeling no ill effects of that tackle. No, they're all putting their arms in there. They know a short kickoff, a high kickoff. Whitehaven have favoured in this season, and with a kicking tee of that height, you couldn't fail to get the, the, the necessary height on the ball for your teammates to get underneath it. 
you know, with a more intensive chase, the Whitehaven players would have actually got to contest that ball. But they didn't, and Dion Bird was able to canter out of his own 30-meter area and make a good 15 there. It was a, a, a strange sort of kickoff, wasn't it? Why not kick it deeper if your players aren't going to try and challenge for the ball with some enthusiasm? Well, Catterford are looking to capitalise on the territory that they've already won. But just outside that Whitehaven 40 where Hepworth is tackled. Now here's Davis. Davis hands it off to Richard Fletcher and Fletcher trundles into the tackle from David Fatia and Spencer Miller. Aaron Smith now, a darting run from the Tigers hooker and then a little crawl for a couple of more metres. The fifth tackle, so Davis will maybe hoist this one towards Calvert's wing. Calvert goes up for it, it's taken though by Damien Blanche and Blanche trying to offload but nobody there. Oh, he did well to keep in the field of play. Well, Leroy Joe intercepted it, Bill, and just managed to hang on. That's good players, just look, they're quicker. They're getting back on side with the referee and then just look at that defensive effort. They get out of the block quick, the first three strides are fast ones. And it means it's hard work for Whitehaven to get the roll forward. A great support for these two sides here. A sellout here at uh, the Holton Stadium. And now Whitehaven making ground with Joel Penny. Aaron Lester now. Lester brings Mick Nannin back on the inside. Nannin across the field. Teams up with Penny again. They're keeping it alive with Tandy. Tandy ducks under the tackle. Manages to offload to Penny. Can Penny get, keep the ball alive? He goes to ground about 20 metres out. They're attacking the end where the Haven supporters are cheering them on as Leroy Joe puts the kick in. Calvert can't keep it alive, it's out. And a promising attack comes to nothing. Steve McCormack, though, well, he said before the game that last year's final had aged him about 25 years, he reckoned. I don't think this afternoon will do him much good. Some positives, though, I would think, for him there. They set him to break through the line. Some fantastic support play again from the Haven players. Backing up whenever the ball carries to get his arms free. But Leroy Joe just got caught in two minds with that Go kick, really. And he would, uh, I'm sure, given his time again, come up with a better play. I think Whitehaven are very much aware Second that they cannot Harris. take Castleford up down the middle. The Tigers pack, very strong, large, and Go mobile as well. Minutes. And that's the reason why Haven are quite happy to give it plenty of air. But great support, that'll lift their spirits. Did he Go lose that? Aaron Smith, it was, who was tackled. Good work from the captain, Andy Henderson. Davis on the last, little chip and chase, and Leroy Joe met him. And referee Steve Ganson saw that one, and this time Brad Davis is not getting up. Well, is that a harsh call, that? You're allowed to put pressure on the kicker. Late challenge on the kicker, though, is it? The referee thinks ball? it was a late decision. We'll get to see here again. Sort of, in my opinion, he's committed to the tackle. I think you're right. It's the fact that he just raises the elbow that is the reason why he's giving away the penalty. Oh, that's a big call to sim in somebody. Can't well, he can find it. I think they've left it somewhere. The red one in on the pool. Well, it's not his wallet, I can assure you of that. So, Leroy Joe pays a heavy price for that. Just a split second, and it's cost him 10 minutes. I don't think it's a matter of where he committed himself, which he had. It was the fact he brought the elbow into the face. If he'd have, have kept his elbow down, he would have got away with it. Were the arms not going up to stop the kick, Steve-O? No, he's a little bit committed. Let your body go forward, yes. To lift up the elbow, no. That's the vigilance in that player to be. So you can come in field if you want, you know. So that's something for the coach, Steve McCormack, to think about. There we go again. That's the reason his arms up there. It's the elbow's in his neck. Well, it's another opportunity for Richard Fletcher. Another simple one for this goal-kicking prop forward. And Castleford ahead by four points to nil now. Fletcher's 13 goals since he's come here from Hull. And they've got, uh, unusually, there is Leroy Joe thinking probably that he's been very hard, harshly uh, done to. Fletcher can kick goals. Craig Hubie, another prop, can kick goals as well. Whitehaven need to readjust now, Bill, don't they? Does Aaron Lester, who's been playing loose forward, drop out and 
start the play at the standoff position. It just puts an extra amount of, of uh, pressure on them when they're having to work in defence with only 12 players. Candy and Fatia Loper have gone off, replaced by Summers and Chambers for Whitehaven there. And in the game when these sides met two weeks ago, Chambers had a massive effort. Came up with some great carries of the ball, very hard to handle. Well, he's the longest serving player at Whitehaven, Craig Chambers, and this will be a very important game for him. Great deal of pride in Whitehaven. Not saying there isn't any in Castleford, but it is a community club. Davis kicks across field. Broadbent is going to let that one dribble over the dead ball line. There's another good kick from Davis, though, wasn't he? The fullback. Broadbent, an experienced player, couldn't quite get to take it on the full. And you know, he's then reliant on what sort of bounce the ball's going to take. Castleford clearly dominating this opening quarter. Here is Aaron Summers, one of the South Sydney old boys in this side, three of them, as I said. Pretty good defence by the Tigers, they really are up for this match. Look at them getting out of the blocks, they're applying the pressure. Not a good kick. Platt brings the ball across the field. Hasn't gone forward yet. And if Aaron Lester has anything to do with it, he won't. Just makes a couple of metres over that 30 line. Now here's big Adam Watine. And Wes Wilson does well. He did wrap him up pretty quickly, didn't he? Wayne Price, he loves the dummy half run. He usually gets good metres when he does it. Just looking that bit stronger at the moment, Castleford. A bit quicker. Hepworth, Davis, here is Fletcher. Bulky figure, he's taken down by Howard Hill and he's lost the ball. Well, Whitehaven are desperate for a shot of mistakes like that that Castleford have come up with. The game was flowing against them. All of a sudden it might be turning back in their favour now with some decent possession. Well, I think, on, I think on the replay that uh, Hill certainly got a fingertip it. to it. Dion, have you got me? Was there someone in attendance? That was the question. A little bit too late now, but Haven certainly need good field position. Here is McNannin. He's topped 300 points for the third successive season for Whitehaven. Really is a points machine, Nanin. Penny. Howard Hill now. And David Seeds goes without it. And the pressure was on there, wasn't it? It was. I mean, amazingly for a team with one less man, they actually had the overlap on the far side. But he chose to come inside Seeds and... By that time, the pass from Hill too late. He passed it, assuming he was going to take the man on the outside. Okay. Not been white Evan at their best, has it, in the opening 19 Hold. minutes? Wait, Davis, so soon. Chesterford have it back with Hepworth. Not too soon. Dion Bird, okay, just short of the halfway line for the Castleford Tigers. Smith. Hockey to cross the 40 meter line. Really is a, a battle of attrition here. Crouch. Well, White, Whitehaven Villa are going to be in a lot of trouble if they don't start moving up. They're hanging back. They're looking to see what Castleford's going to do with the football. You've got to get into the faces. Castleford are getting over the advantage line with ease. With Adam Watine, they're getting over it. Great work from the Cook Islander. Davis changes direction. Henderson puts a little kick in, that's going to be too strong, I think, but Craig Talbot wasn't going to take any chances. I bet his teammates wishes he had, because they don't fancy their prospects here now, Bill. Another great kick from Castleford. The ball did look as though it was going to go dead, but it's easy, I suppose, with the hindsight of the camera angles we've got. He didn't know who was behind him. I did the right thing, Talbot knew that there must have been somebody coming in the blind side. Let's kick it dead. Crouch. So much at stake for these two clubs. It's not surprising that 
tension in the air. There's been tension about this game all week. Speak to people from the Castleford Club, and you can just sense the anxiety, the nerves around the camp because they know that Super League is waiting for whoever gets through this. Flat almost got through then. They're going on the short ball, and they're in. They're in with Craig Newby. Only on the pitch a few moments, and Craig Newby is on the score sheet. Well, it was going to come, wasn't it? They were just rolling forward, and White Devon weren't able to cope with the speed with which they were playing the ball. The goal line drop rate probably was the cause and effect of this. Trapped near their own line. Relentless pressure here now from the Tigers. Davis running up the line, just held up short. And then again, quick play of the ball. White Devon not quite said, and UB hits the hole well and crashes over. Really good try from Casford, but they converted some of that pressure into points. Picked it up, he runs into the gap, and knows he can't be stopped. He'll be happy, he would have sensed it, like I'm sure all you viewers because you would have seen it, the way that Whitehaven's defence, you cannot hesitate at this top-flight football level. You've got to give it all you've got into their faces. They're not doing that. Craig Huby will convert it, or try and convert his own try. He's missed it. But Huby gets the first try of the game. Castleford ahead by eight points to nil. He's normally very, very accurate with the boots. He was accurate as far as the try goes. I think Whitehaven will have had a big chat to themselves there now. They recognise the open quarter and completely been outplayed by the Tigers. They need to sort of turn things around. Very often they play the ball just far quicker for Castleford. Aaron Smith and others are just beginning to run easily from that area. Castleford have a relentless flow downfield. There you go. You see one Watine off and another one comes along just to do the same to your Frankies on. Castleford ringing the changes. Aaron Smith. The scampering run from the hooker and he was almost through it. He did a desperate tackle from Aaron Summers to bring him down on the halfway line. And Castleford looking to take advantage of this numerical supremacy at the moment, keeping the ball alive. Here is Hubie now. Tackled by Aaron Lester. Whitehaven on the rack at the moment. Frank Watteen. He gets the ball away. They've got the overlap here. They've got numbers on the right. They come back in field with Crouch through the middle. And Crouch will get there. They've taken advantage truly from the Whitehaven point of view. Superbly for the Castleford Tigers supporters. Well, Castleford started this game quicker than their opponents. And they just had to increase that speed of the whole flow of the game. The play of the ball was just far quicker. And on the back of that, the almost easy roll downfield. See the players here now. White Seven's defence isn't set. Offload and support. And eventually here, Dion Bird has had a fantastic opening quarter. Turns it inside to Crouch, who just presses the pedal. Okay, well, and crosses it for another try. White Seven really in free fall at the moment, going backwards. Casper with some great skill, great angles of running, changes against the defence, comes back inside, passes for another Casper try. Very poor defence indeed. Take nothing away from Casper, they're keeping this ball alive. Craig Huby on target with that. And just at the uh, recreation ground a couple of weeks ago, Casper in the first half at least, building up. A big lead, 14-0 ahead they are now, something for Whitehaven and their supporters to think about. Without doubt, they are in a very large hole indeed. The Scatterford, they're full of confidence, but when you give a side that wants to support the man carrying the football all the room in the world, you are going to find it very difficult. It doesn't help with the fact that they've had a man in the sin bin either. Another lofted restart from McNan in there and QB is able to make easy yards Phil. Whitehaven are in big trouble aren't they? They've got to hope that something can be turned around here. Well they turned it around in that grand final qualifier didn't they? They were 18-0 down and they came back to win that one spectacularly. They know it can be done but 
they can't afford to leave it too long here because the momentum is just with Castleford now well Leroy Joe has come into the fray so they don't have the numbers now but look at that well, they're, just, they're being split apart from the dummy half first and second markers are not working overtime look they're hanging back can't do it Davis hoists the kick again Calvert is under pressure they've got it and Blanche gets the try Damien Blanche just soared through the air there Davis with the kick Calvert was under pressure and the player with momentum just swooped for that ball well the problems began from the kickoff there Bill he allowed Craig Cuby far too easy to get out of his own danger area he was over 30 metres all of a sudden they're at the other end of the field there's very little he can do when the team can kick the ball that accurately he got up above his man it was a superb catch kept his eye on the ball stayed on side until the kick went up and a fantastic catch in the air spin and turn and put the ball safely over the line great try when you take the ball and you go to help the man that's getting the ball you've got to make sure you put yourself in between the onrushing traffic but I'm afraid they failed to do that much to the delight of the Tiger fans but this is one-way traffic and you get the impression that Whitehaven they've gone on the motorway in just a box and there's no wheels there because they're just being run around by this Tiger outfit they're moving nowhere can they get a conversion QB kicks it they've scored three tries in four minutes and suddenly a 4-0 lead for Castleford is transformed into a 20 points to nil lead Damien Blanche who joined only in the last few weeks well here's a kick again the simple problem is they're allowing Castleford too many chances to spend time down at that end of the field and time and time again Steve you just highlighted it there's been a Whitehaven defender lying on the floor Aaron Smith from Castleford is able to pick up the ball and once he's going forward, he's got support either side. It's just far too easy with which they can make ground. Yeah, you can see that the pace of this Tiger outfit is, well, well above the quality that Whitehaven is showing. And even when they've had the football, they've been spoiling everything by coming up with errors. Short passes that are not finding the support, but take it, you can take it away from this cat outfit Castle that I would have been very, very strong. They have bent business right from the start. And look at the scoreboard 20 0. You get the impression the way that Whitehaven are playing, it's going to be a very busy evening. Well, first mistake for some time from Castleford and from Brad Davis. And it's possibly a lifeline for Whitehaven because it's mean it means that they're going to get possession back on that 40 meter line. It's the turnover. And they desperately needed this, Phil. They did now. Can they sort of put any dents in the Castleford defensive line? Can they leave defenders lying on the floor? That's the challenge. Got to run with a bit more intensity. Look, Castleford controlling that rough area. Actually, they have a need to up their pace and intensity. Aaron Summers met by uh, Frank Watine and Dion Bird. Carl Sice, Leroy Joe back on the field and hoping to make amends. Joel Penny hounded down. I don't think you can go around the defensive line until you started to punch some holes through. It is a penalty. Just gives him a bit more possession inside Casper's half. It's a tough thing to go on with it. They've got to settle things down, Whitehaven. The lack of field position is really, really been disappointing. They've got to come away with a score here. Well, they're coming forward now through Craig Chambers. Chambers penalty. has lost it. Well, I think he's been badly done to there, and I'm sure that the coach, Steve McCormack, would agree with me. There were plenty of hands around. Plenty of hands in there. And there were three would-be defenders. Oh, it's got to be penalised there, surely. You think it was Frank Watteen? Yep. Who was the guilty man? Well, he got away with it if he was so a great opportunity for Whitehaven to stabilize things has gone begging with the lead at 20 points to nil Castleford can now just start closing it down make sure that they keep possession just irritate their opposition 
Steve-O, they had a lead of 18 points to nil a couple of weeks ago, and that fat lot of good that did him. Well, the point is, is that you don't get overconfident. You make sure that you keep that lead. After that experience, I don't think they will be overconfident. That's a good kick again from Davis, and it's forced Gary Broadbent to try and bring it away, and Damien Blanche does well. He's got pace, this guy has. He's was signed, as I said, just a few weeks ago in August, having been playing Premier League grade football for the Cougars team. That's the point, Bill. Don't get overexcited. And when you've got a man of the quality of Brad Davis in your outfit, he can take the advantage. He wanted that ball desperately. He knew he would kick into the corner. OK, it may have got in the in-goal area. They've got a seven, second set of six but they knew the field position yet again and that's what it's all about Brad Davis uh, just awarded a three month testimonial by the Rugby Football League for his services to the game in this country and services that go back a long way to 1992 when he started with Nottingham well Castleford making a mistake that time they've gifted possession to Whitehaven Rod Van Pratt showing the way, they've got to start to run a bit harder, punch some holes here now going forward. Joel Penny, two Chambers and Chambers driven back, a great defence from Castleford that time. Well that tells you everything you need to know about the opening half an hour in this game. Howard Hill, this time they're trying to get it wide. Seeds comes back in field. Joel Penny. Penny, oh, snapped up by Davis, and Davis, nobody's going to catch him. Wes Wilson is trying. We've not even reached halfway yet, and already it's looking ominous for Whitehaven. It's looking like Super League for the Castleford Tigers, because everything is going their way, and Whitehaven just had to try. They had to chance their arm there, and the chance is too far, and Brad Davis, the veteran, snapped it up. Well, it's easy to criticise from the television box. But I don't know why Whitehaven did have to go wide there, Bill. Inside their own half, they've had no real chance to attack. They're trying to go wide before they've actually gone forward. That's just a perfect invitation for Brad Davis to come up out of the line. He read the play, got inside of Leicester, and knew that once he caught the ball, well, it was a glory 50 metre run, wasn't it? Well, you can take the gamble when you've got the points on the board. If it had been nil-nil, he would not have come out of the line of defence but he is so experienced and boy is he excited he's every right to be when you've got such a commanding lead you just say to yourself it's worth the goal they've got to spread it wide and he read it well they couldn't touch him Craig Huby 84 goals already this season make that 85 he's enjoying himself he kicks five in defeat the other week at Whitehaven and those Haven fans know that they are staring down the barrel at the moment. The dream is being shattered before their very eyes. And Brad Davis has dealt the latest blow. A thousand points in the British game, more than a thousand points already. And if this is the end of Brad Davis's career, it looks like being a glorious end. I feel sorry for Whitehaven. They haven't turned up have they here yet. Another short high kickoff. But none of the players could actually get there to contest for it. And a penalty here by Steve Ganson for a high tackle. Mark Jackson just on the field, is it? You're right. Just trying to make a, an impression early on and made the wrong impression. For Steve McCormack. Well, he was confident before this game. Not overconfident, but he will be desperate to get into that dressing room to just get to his players. They're going to have to do something spectacular now, trailing 26-0, and Castleford coming at them once again with Hubie. Hanfus, Crouch, oh, and Crouch has gone without the ball, and that was probably a let-off. It was a good job that somebody got a hand to that. Well, I think they're just hanging on in there, aren't they, Whitehaven, at the moment. At 26 points, Bill, they've still got a chance. They could score 26 points in 45 minutes. 
put any more than 26 and it's all over. Is it all over for Dave Woods if you believe what he's been saying it is? He's suggesting that no matter what the result of this game, he won't be there next season. That he's not secure in his job, surely. If Castleford pull this off in the way that they're pulling it off at the moment, then going to be a great day for everybody associated with this effort and not home and dry yet and this Whitehaven side as I've said has shown before that they can come back and they need some points on the board before half time and they've got four minutes to do that Joel Penny Chambers tackled on halfway A little chip over the top for his teammates to chase, but Wayne Price has got there, and Price has lost the ball, and play on. So Haven have it back. This is a great opportunity as Leroy Joe goes up the middle. Aaron Lester now. Lester looking to inspire his side. Summers. The Haven fans behind that line, urging them on, urging their side to try and find something in the closing minutes. Mark Jackson. Makes a couple more yards. Three tackles gone. Seif trying to duck under the tackles. He's lost the ball. He's lost the ball. He's got the ball out in the tackle. The tackle count continues. Penny, opportunity here. Our seats came back in field and they just managed to cling on to him. It's the last here. Penny trying to twist in the tackle and he's held up. And he gets the penalty. They weren't standing square. Steve McCormack knows that the opportunity is still there. But it's right on the line here. They've got to get on with it. Well, Mark Jackson didn't know that he was supposed to get on with it there. He was standing stuck still. Sice. Leicester. Leicester pops the ball up for Spencer Miller. And another penalty. Offside. The pressure is relentless in this last couple of minutes, Phil. This is if the referee trying to get a try for White Devon here, isn't it? Look, outrageous suggestion. Well, injury here now to a customer player. Looks like a severe left arm, right arm. Is it Brad Davis? Oh. It is. Well, it looks as though he's broken it, doesn't he? The way he's holding it, you see a player very confident, aren't they? They know when there's something wrong. Well, Davis went into the tackle there. Getting moved out of play. Come on, we want to get on with the game. Well, there's another player down as well. It looks like Craig Huby. Davis getting the attention. Huby getting attention as well. And the Whitehaven fans haven't got any sympathy. And hardly surprising because they can see their side stretching out towards the lifeline that's hanging there in front of them. If they can get some points on the board here, Steve Ganson is telling them to clear the injured players off the field. It's another penalty that's just been taken. Seeds. Eight metres out. Whitehaven with about 90 seconds on the clock in this first half. Desperate to get points on the board and almost doing so through Craig Chambers who's just a, a metre or so short of that line. They go on the short side. Summers flips the ball away. And Calvert does ever so well to keep it alive but he's lost maybe 12 metres there. That's the third tackle. Here's Joel Penny. Penny straight up the middle. And he's clung on to Sice now. Sice darting through the Haven fans on their feet behind that castle for try line, urging their side on. On the last now. It needs to be a good, good kick from Penny. They're running it. And they can't keep it alive. It was Aaron Lester, the captain, almost through there. And okay, where was that? the opportunity just would not come for Whitehaven. Well, I'll tell you what, Catherine has shown us that they can attack. They've also shown us they can defend. But well, this is an interesting point here. 
Brad Davis, I, I believe he's making a claim to the referee that he was bitten claiming? on the arm. Is it Carl Tice? Carl Tice. Okay. All right, yeah. You go away, I don't need any of you. I can deal with a touch of. Go away, I don't need you. Well, referee Steve Ganson has called over the Whitehaven hooker. There's a complaint to bite in and there's a bite mark visible, so be quiet. Touch judges witness the bite mark. Related to the tackle here, be quiet. We've not seen anything. The incident goes on before, and we reached out over there with an handover. Okay, all right. Get on with it. Well, that's going to spice things up a little bit, or we'll size things up a yeah, little bit. Got a problem now? They've scanned the video. Well, that was White Evans' chance, wasn't it? You felt really they had to get some points there. Uh, they just didn't quite have any way of breaking through what's been a very strong defensive line that Castle have shown in the first half. Well, it has been all Castleford Tigers in this first half. They're not home and dry yet, but they've made major progress in their effort to return to Super League at the first attempt. A flurry of tries, three tries in four minutes have contributed to the domination of Dave Woods' side. At half-time, it's Castleford Tigers 26, Whitehaven nil. Well, isn't it remarkable the way fortunes in sport change? Twelve months ago, Castleford were absolutely disconsolate. They had lost their Super League status. They vowed to try and make it back at the first attempt. Brad Davis has had a 40 minutes to savour, and so have the Tigers. Look at that scoreline, 26-0. Players are emerging for the start of the second half here at uh, the Halton Stadium in Widnes. And the Castleford Tigers are halfway there, 26 points nil. They lead Whitehaven. And whoever wins this match will take their place in the Engage Super League next year. Delight on the terraces. Remember, they were in tears 12 months ago. But Whitehaven, well, they've got to have more of the ball in the second half. When they get it, what will they do with it? Let's get back to the commentary. We have Phil and Steve o alongside Bill Arthur. Casper Tigers 40 minutes away then from a return to Super League. Whitehaven, a massive 40 minutes for them if they are to achieve elite status. And they need to do something about it very early in this second half as Hepworth gets that ball up in the air for the Casper Tigers. And significantly, there's a great chase from the Tigers to that lofted start, Phil. Well, Dion Bird, I think, has been outstanding in this game. And these sides met a couple of weeks ago, scores try, tied at 22 points all, just over 10 minutes remaining. And Dion Bird was actually sin-binned from that point on. The game went away from the Tigers. I think he's more than made up for that sort of indiscretion. And uh, he's been just a tower of strength, really, both with the ball and without it. Ferocious tackling from Tatterford early on to Joel Penny. Puts the boot to ball, gets it downfield to Michael Platt. Good chase from Haven, but Platt trying to go round the outside. Tackled by Wesley Wilson. Now Wayne Price. There's got to be some desperation from this Whitehaven side. That's great work from the captain, Henderson. Takes his side up to the 40-metre line. Three tackles gone, and once more ominously for Whitehaven, Castleford are finding yards relatively easy to come by. Here is Brad Davis. Davis shifts the ball to the right. Hanforth. Crouch. That's the fifth tackle. Hanforth is there. Davis will put the kick in. And again, they're under pressure. And this time they've taken it well. Wesley Wilson did well to get up there above Wayne Price. And if Castleford can't score, they're saying to White Seven, well, you're going to have to go about 90 metres if you're going to score some points on us, and you've got six tackles to do it. The first couple of tackles, they can't get forward. Just a marker defence, really, from uh, Castleford. Uh, Watine, Frank Watine, just jumping out and getting broadband. That's the difference between the two sides. Around that rook area, Castleford have been dominant. One or two missing for Cass today. Andy Kane unlucky to miss out 
Michael Eager unlucky to miss out at the end of his career in Britain because of a hamstring injury. He's down on the sidelines with Rod Studd. Michael, I'm sure you'd be rather be out there playing in the thick of this battle. I think most people in the ground think this game is finished. What's the view from the Casper dressing room? Oh, no, mate. We, we've still got a job to do, you know. Um, great start by the boys. All the boys, uh, all the backs uh, hooking in and doing a good job sharing the workload, you know. You know, We've got to um, have a good start, which we've done this second half, and hopefully um, we'll come through with the win, mate. I suppose that what happened in Whitehaven a couple of weeks ago will help you because you had a big lead there and you, you lost it. This time you'll be forewarned and forearmed. Yeah, definitely. D different trip, uh, dressing room this, um, this half. The boys uh, were talking about that and, mate, they're really going to hook in and get this win, mate. Just finally give us an assessment of Brad Davis' performance this afternoon. Brad's been awesome. He's, he's been the backbone of the team for the, um, for the whole season and what I've seen. Um, you know, he's kicking games spot on. He's, he's the linchpin for us. Thanks, Michael. I'll let you get back kick. to the, uh, the bench there. Cheers, mate. And Price was chasing. Well, a great start from Casper. I'm sure they must have spoken about a positive opening to this second half. With a 26-point lead, you don't really want to give too many invitations to your opponents. Bang! In went Adrian Vowles. Welcome to the party. And Vowles over here, and he was swinging in there again. Just like the old days. The Man of Steel 1999. Just like he'd never been away. Little doubt in my mind, the reason why Castleford have been so dominant is because of their solid defence. They've worked as a good unit. And there oh, again! Interception, Brad Davis, in for a second. The puncture extraordinaire, that surely is it. Davis gets his second in identical fashion. Read the play, was on his toes. And he might be 37 years of age, but he thinks like a youngster. All the faculties are still there. Well, interesting play from Whitehaven to run it on the last tackle, deep inside their own half, and let to go with the pass, but the pass goes into the arms of Davis. And I was just going to say, there was still a chance for Whitehaven, but not with that try to Davis. He reads the game over so well. He has intimated that this will be the end of his career as a player. He wants to become a coach. And I said at half-time, fellas, that after this guy slots the two, and he does, that anyone interested in a coach should be on his doorstep tomorrow morning because he reads the game ever so well. He's had his critics about coming back at such an old age. Do you think, though, Steve, of being a good player necessarily translates to being a good coach? Well, I think the way that he reads the game and the way that he can get his team around the park, but most importantly, is that his kicking game, once you know how to kick and put it into a position, you can pass all that knowledge on to someone else. I think he will make a very fine coach indeed. That's got to be a penalty because... Nanin had got some loft on that uh, restart. The ball came back, and as Haven were going for it, the man was taken out. Incidentally, Johnny Hepworth it was who added the conversion, a formality. And Castleford, 32 nil ahead. Well, 2001, the uh, NRL Grand Final. I think Newcastle Knights were 24 nil up, and Parramatta scored 24 second half points. It didn't win the game, but it can be done. But 32 points, Phil. Uh, ever the optimist, I'll say yes, but you need something very dramatic. We keep saying they did it two weeks ago at the recreation ground, but there's got to be a major transformation in this Haven side. They've got to find the urgency from somewhere if they are going to get back into this game. Carl Sice is tackled about 20 metres out. They've got to take control of the ruck as well when they've got the ball in hand. They've been trying to spin it out wide with not much success. They've got to start running the angles a bit more, working more as a unit. The two halfbacks, Joe and Penny, have to start to combine. Joel Penny, lovely ball back in field to Carl Seiss. Penny once more. Here's the captain, Aaron Lester. Quick hands, oh, and Wayne Price very nearly snaffled that ball up. It's back to six. Should be. Well, mistake, wasn't it? It was the first knock-on from Price, but then Nanning did knock on Steve-O before. Yeah. Two knock-ons. Whitehaven took possession. Just got a fingertip to it, did Price. Well, they certainly need 
the rub of the green at the moment to Haven. I was uh, leaving the studio and I was looking at the majority of the Whitehaven fans just outside and well, they were dumbfounded. They could not work it out. Can they work out a way to get through here? They can't and Adrian Vowles picks it up. Vowles will be on a plane tomorrow back to Australia. He's not hanging around. Lots of speculation as to whether this might be an extended stay for the former Tigers favourite. But he says he's just here for this brief spell and he's going back home. Well, it's turning out to be a final for the old-timers, isn't it? And they are doing their stint. Composure will be the key now for the Tigers. They know it. They know they have that man leading them on. Brad Davis, his kicking game. The chase is nothing short of superb. But their defence, absolutely outstanding. Only three missed tackles in the first 40 minutes. They're good stats. Leroy Joe tries to duck under the tackle. Makes a few yards for Haven. He's missed only one game this season, Leroy Joe. And Carl Seiss does well to just flip that ball out the hooker. Four tackles gone, though, and it's a real struggle to make the yards for this Haven side. Leicester. Here's Ryan Tandy now. That's the fifth tackle. They're just going across the field. And it's Sice who puts the kick in, and they're lacking direction now. Well, it's very difficult, isn't it? When you're that far behind on the scoreboard, you're, you're tempted to try different things if you've not done all season. And what happens when you do that, sometimes you can actually look worse. Um, you know, the things that they've done that have made them the consistently best side in the league this year, of course, finishing top at the end of the regular season. There's no more that's gone out the window because the, the scoreboard's telling them, the fans and the credit telling them, look, you're well beaten here. So you try and do things to get your side back in the game, give them a lift, but very often it can just give possession to your opponents. Hepworth just inside his own half. Here comes Damien Blanche, try scorer, one of the try scorers this afternoon for the Castleford Tigers. Here's Dion Bird. Just solid rugby league football, that's all that's needed. Work it to one section and then make sure the kick is on yet again. Hanforth hoisted across the field, well taken by Wesley Wilson that time. I say he's done a fine but job as were Wilson because they've, they've also pinpointed him as being a weak link. Another grand final coming up, just a small matter of the Super League 10 grand final next Saturday at 5.30, Sky Sports 1. It's the Rhinos against the Bulls, it promises to be awesome evening at Old Trafford theatre of dreams awaits this is turning out to be a bit of a nightmare for the Whitehaven side 40 meters from their own try line 32 points to nil down and that's out on the fall from Carl Seiss and Haven players standing with their hands on their hips looking dejected well, they're in free fall aren't they Again, great defence from Castleford to restrict Whitehaven to such a measly game. A number of times they're having to pick up possession just over their own try line. Very little they can do. Very little they can do to break through this Castleford defence. Whoever's taken the ball forward, whatever they've tried, the Tigers have been there in the right place. The thing is that the Castleford side have just mesmerised this Whitehaven defence. They've been very unassured. Look at Adam Wasine go. They just couldn't stop him. 15 yards there with two players on his back. Hanforth, Davis stretches out to grasp that ball, Platt through the middle, support, and another try for Castleford. Tom Hockey is there. And Hockey just maybe milking his part a little bit there, which is not very wise. But another try, another blow for Whitehaven. And Castleford now set fair for Super League. Whatever the score, you still can appreciate the handling skills here. The accuracy of the pass here, Hanforth to Davis. Short pass to Ernst, Platt comes back on the inside and the offload to Hockey. That's fantastic, great play. Really shifting it to weather some space. Platt just coming back against the sliding defence, offloading to Hockey. Really well worked try. 
been a big problem for Whitehaven. You mentioned the sliding defence, Phil, but it's sliding with not much effect. You've got to go as a unit. They have failed to do that. And Castleford have just picked them out, and it's been quite easy in the end. Just basic rugby league football. Good, hard, solid work down one side of the field, and then you have the ability of Davis, Henderson, to get the link working. And they've got the power out wide. Richard Fletcher is out wide. Looking to drift this one in, but he's pushed it across the face of the posts. But Whitehaven nil, Castleford 36 makes sad reading. And Tom Hockey, try scorer, is just going to get a bit of a talking to, I think, from Steve Ganson for that little bit of uh, showboating after that try, which was a bit silly, really, right in front of the Haven fans. Just right down, yeah, unnecessary really from Hockey. The other thing that this game proves, Bill, and I'm sure that both Brian Noble and Connor Smith will be watching it, is the fact that you need to start well in a grand final. It's very difficult in the whole momentum of the games against you to come back from it. The games in grand finals go quicker, the atmosphere, the pace of the match, you must start well. Castleford have proved that today, Bill. Well, we see the replay of Hockey celebrating. OK, he's pointing to the badge, and I'm sure he's exceptionally proud of it but well done the officials well done steve ganson we are one sport that can hold our heads very high in the fact that the ability for players not to do things like that it is very rare and i'm so happy that the officials clamped down on it well, you're right steve -O. steve ganson didn't miss that but haven Still battling, still hoping at least to break their duck. Carl Seiss, he's got 11 tries in the last nine games. What he wouldn't give for just one tonight, this afternoon, this evening. It's getting dark. They're keeping the ball alive. Here's Mick Nanin. Nanin puts the kick in. They might get another set here. They will. That's progress at least. Yeah, a step in the right direction. Is that the shock of the scoreboard that's made Wayne Price and Hurst stick up like that? I don't think he would have ever dreamt of 36 points to nil with 25 minutes to go. Well, I don't think he ever dreamt also that he wouldn't have had his hair ruffled throughout the, uh, the entire match. It has been an extremely disappointing performance by, by Whitehaven, and they know it. They know they are capable of better rugby league football than this, and in many ways it has been Davis's game, hasn't it? Everything that's centred around this man. That's a good break. Great goal. run by Ryan Tandy. That's what was needed. And they're coming forward now. Carl Rudd. Rudd gets the ball wide. They could be in here. They are in here with David Seeds. And Seeds gets Whitehaven's first try. The veteran of the side, the club try scoring record holder. And Steve McCormack knows that that's too little, too late. Well, it's no coincidence. The first time Ryan Tandy's been able to burst through one or two Castleford defenders. On the second play following that, they then got Castleford defensive line in disarray. And with a good shift of the ball and a strong run from Seeds, you start to get some reward for that. He bumps off Hanford, and crashes over. Good lift for his teammates. Gets the back into the game. Nice pass from Rudd. Dummy and goal, step and bump, and a try for all their efforts. Nick Nanin approaching a, a century of goals this season. This from way out wide, and he's missed with that. And Nanin, a shake of the head, just about sums up Whitehaven's feelings about this afternoon. Well, that's the first scoring opportunity they've really had. They've taken them. Congratulations on that. And it's the point I was making, Bill, is that so much so it's been Brad Davis's day that that is the first time that all the major incidents throughout this game have not involved Mr. Davis. He's been bitten. They've been reported. He's had an injury to his, his wrist. He got taken out off the ball, which 
saw one of the players, Leroy Joe from Whitehaven, get 10 minutes in the sin bin, and he's been in everything that Castleford has scored. Man of the match, so early? Yes. Good work by Chambers. Joel Penny now. Penny across the field. Nanin bumps away the challenge, but then a careless pass back behind him, and Penny has to retreat to pick it up. And they're just over their own 40-meter line, and four tackles gone. Sice with the run, a good scything run from Carl Sice, but was just trying to adjust to get the pass away, and then gets the penalty. Well, at least Whitehaven have enjoyed a little bit of possession, a little roll of momentum. It's gone in their favour, hasn't it? Can they capitalise while they have possession inside the opponent's half? Tandy once more. Takes the ball over the 20-metre line. Here they come now with Spencer Miller. Miller. They go down the short side. Here is Tandy once again. Wilson. Wilson is shackled by Price and they're going to get him into touch. Well, superb defence uh, from Castleford. Wayne Price, proud of his corner of the field to make sure they don't come down there again. Brian Tandy offloads inside. It's good effort there from Castleford to deny the Whitehaven threat. Well, he got away with it. And the fact that it was a throttle tackle, but he went in touch. And again, the Tigers' defence, which has been superb, hasn't it? They really have worked hard. Adrian Vowles tackled by David Thatchelover. Second grand final of the year for Adrian Vowles. I think he had a, a grand final with the Burley Bears just a few months ago. I think there's a bit more at stake in this one. With all respect to the Burley Bears, a famous club. Look at that defence there now from Whitehaven. Forcing what team back. They just needed that in the opening 20 rather than the last 20 of this game. Oh! Swinging up. <laughs> does well there is the tackle from Carl Rudd. I say Craig Chambers, if it had contacted there, he could have been going for an early shower. Five you mentioned the Burley Bears, uh, Bill. It'd be a lot damn sight warmer there than it is here. It's a balmy Sunday evening in Witness. <laughs> Discovered that Witness has actually got a promenade the other day. And plenty more in the company of Mr. Hadfield in his latest Second up and over epic. Five. Just on the 20 meter line now, Whitehaven trying to salvage some pride more than anything that they can maybe go back up the M6 saying that at least in the second half they made a battle of it but forward pass like that is only going to contribute to their downfall. Yeah, but Bill, you've got to try that, haven't you, at this point in the game. It's a nice little offload, he just drifted forward and the uh, referee caught that one out. Gets his arms over the top, nice pass to Chambers. Steve Ganson wasn't having it. Oh, in fact, did it come off Henderson's back? It was David Fatialofer, it was, a former junior Kiwi in the company of the likes of Joe Wangener and Henry Paul back in 1993. Tavita Vicona, I think, was one of their number. There's Michael Shenton. You wouldn't bet against a hat-trick from Davis, would you? No, it's been that sort of afternoon for Brad Davis. Here goes Aaron Smith. Smith. Showing the ball, continuing across the field. They're about 15 metres out of Castleford. Here's Richard Fletcher. Fatia Lofer puts the shoulder in, brings him down with the aid of Aaron Lester. Davis booms the pass out. Little grubber kick. Oh, it's knocked on, it's back to six. It's all going Castleford's way. Hepworth popped it up, looking for Craig QB. QB is shackled by the Whitehaven defence. Smith, Vowles, Davis now. Davis fires the ball out to Shenton. Shenton on, oh, knocked on by Hepworth, by uh, Damien Blanche it was. Just took his eyes off the football, didn't expect to be popped out, but 36-4. You've got to have your eyes open because they've got to keep at it. 
They know this game is well and truly in the pocket. That's Michael Shenton who's uh, deputising for Michael Eager. He's 19 years of age, Shenton, and the sort of player now that Castleford have got to think about constructing their side for Super League 11 around. I'm sure that Castleford have had plan A and plan B for quite a few months there, Bill. If they were to go up, they need to know who they need, what they need to do to have a chance of uh, being successful in Super League 11. They would be successful here anyway, making ground for his team. Full credit also as well, a lot of the Castleford players, they signed with Castleford this year on a very much lower contract in the hope that they would make it in the Super League and then they could perhaps look for a longer, better contract and you've got to give the players some sort of credit for that, for having the confidence in the club and their ability and it looks as though they will be rewarded because it's been an outstanding effort by the Tigers. Welcome back to Super League. Well, that was a very interesting kick from Carl Sice, I think it was, and Calvert was chasing it for all he was worth, and he's worth quite a bit, second only to Darren Albert in terms of the fastest man in the game, just a, a couple of years ago. But it's the Castleford Tigers fans who are making all the noise here. They know that it's going to be a swift return to Super League for their club. Just one season in the wilderness, and Super League will return to the jungle next year. We just get to see whether they can play for a full 80 here. Emotionally, it's been a big day for them. What have they got left in the final quarter? The dummy half runs. Our team now, I suppose, like you say, trying to press the, the club with an eye on next season. Here's Richard Fletcher. Well, I made the point, Bill, that, uh, oh, offside. I made the point, Bill, that, you know, you wouldn't bet against David getting the hat trick, but you'd have to be more confident of David's doing that when Whitehaven have the football. <laughs> Cruel, but probably accurate, but fair. He'll be pleased. He's also come under quite a lot of criticism this season. But the way that he's marshaled his troops and got them ready for this, you can't take anything away from him. Well, it's it's always superb. Always going to be difficult for whoever was in the job because the expectations were so high at the jungle. Here they come again. Andy Henderson. Brothers Ian and Kevin here to watch him. Ian with the balls, Kevin with Wakefield. Davis. Oh, and Hockey couldn't take that. And it's picked up by Whitehaven. Well, the poor pass back just behind Tom Hockey. Yeah, they needed the ball in front, so he needed to go to a fellow teammate. They did have the numbers, didn't they? Nanny. Wilson outnumbered on that right flank. Here's Nanny bringing it back in field. But just look at that defensive effort again from Castleford. Just make it hard for Whitehaven to gain any ground. It's going to be hard for the official as well. Steve Ganton, he's, he's experienced enough. That's play on, one and one. Uh, he's got to keep an eagle eye on this because a bit of frustration from the opposition from what they could be a little bit of squared ups going on. They've got to be very careful that it doesn't explode. Bit of a problem for Tom Hockey, meanwhile. He's struggling with what looks like a shoulder injury in back play. Here is Vowles looking to sign off with some points on the board for his side. In his third spell with the Council of the Tigers, Adrian Bowles. Oh, great tackle. QB brought down just a couple of metres out. Shenton trying to go on his own. He's over that line, but I think he's held up. I, right, down I don't think that Shenton's had enough force. Great defence. What about the tackle earlier from Seeds? And then he got himself involved. It's short there. And it's underneath the arm there. This will be N-O-T-O-Y. I'd give it Steve, actually. Well, it's short there, it hasn't made it. Yeah. And then it rolls on the arm, that's no try. I think he could be right, you know. It will make a change, Bill. That's what Ian and Ollerton, the video ref, and it's won't, It won't be a sympathy vote, this either. He's got it right if it's no try. Shenton hoping that it will be the positive but it's not it's no try but they still retain possession held up was the verdict so that the danger hasn't passed for Whitehaven 
Here's Big Frank Watini. The ball's going to go to Brad Davis, you can bet that. Henderson puts the kick in. And Gary Broadbent is there. Solid as a, a rock, the Haven fullback. Well, they've just denied Whitehaven any real chance in this second half. Look how often they get the ball there. Time and time again for 26 minutes. We've seen Whitehaven just moving the ball around here, trying to get away from their own try line. Ryan Tandy has worked really hard in this second half to try and give him a bit of momentum. But he's been fighting a losing battle, really. Broadbent again. That's the fifth tackle, though. Oh, and then Seif just flinging that ball out. Nobody was anticipating it. And now they've, man they've managed to land themselves with an overlap here. Nanin back on the inside. They do well with Aaron Lester, and Lester could be away. He's got Nanin inside him. Nanin's strength will get him there, will it? No, the ball comes off. And that will be the turnover. It came off a Castleford body, but accidentally. Well, they almost scored the best try of the day, didn't they? Tandy there just draws in Nanin. Wonderful support here. I suppose this is more of what Whitehaven have been about all season. And I'm glad we've seen this because it justifies the efforts throughout the year. Eventually denied by Casper's defence, but Steve McCormack knows he's tied to a far better team than what we've witnessed here today. You can only play as good as the opposition will allow you to do, and the Tigers have just been everywhere. It's been a mixed few days for Steve McCormack. The National League One Coach of the Year award at uh, Ellen Road last Tuesday, second year running he's got that award but I'm sure he'd swap all the accolades all the trophies for a different result here today isn't it amazing Bill that over the years the high percentage of players and coaches who pick up awards like that, it usually puts the marker off their career for quite some time it certainly does, it tends to uh, be the harbinger of doom doesn't it Broadbent trying to get Craig Calvert away. Seeds, who was tackled. Fatia Lofa flips the ball out. And Whitehaven just flinging caution to the wind here. Men in support. Oh, and again, they couldn't reach their teammate. And it's picked up by Platt. He looks like a player who could impress us next year in Super League, Steve or Michael Platt. And the well, fullback who's got that sort of pace always has a chance. Look, he covers the break well. Yeah. And then he reacts to that ball on the floor and wants to attack as soon as he picks it up. And look who was there to make sure that he got his fingertips to it. That man Davis again. Fletcher. Watini. 40 metres out or so from the Whitehaven line. Michael Platt has got experience of Super League with the Salford City Reds, of course. Davis gets the ball away. Four tackles We're gone, going, they're on the 40 right metre line. We're good. It's about 10 minutes to go Take here. Here is Shenton. Couldn't get the ball to Damien Blanche, and that'll be a knock on. And the frustration showing for Whitehaven. I think it's disappointment, isn't it? They've uh, built themselves up all week and just didn't perform in that first half. Well, such expectation in, in Cumbria, or in their part of Cumbria anyway. That so much on this game, players, the employer BNFL gave players uh, some time off to cope with the media expectations, I'm told. Such were the demands of the, the local media on them. So much hype. Yeah, it certainly is. And that's the hardest pill that Whitehaven will have to swallow, because they know that they have been beaten man for man by a better side and they have not really performed to the best of their ability so they will be upset but they're not giving giving in they're not throwing the towel in Calvert is dragged into touch great stuff and that I think is how the game started for Whitehaven wasn't it I think that sums it up doesn't it just that effort there to just to put Whitehaven on the back foot or even over the sideline when they have the ball, just look at it, dragged him over the side. Good work from Blanche, though. We often talk about in soccer, goalkeepers making themselves big, and that's exactly what Blanche did. Bang, come to Daddy and you're over the whitewash. 
Well, he seems like a, a canny recruit, this Damien Blanche. Only here for a brief spell, but he's uh, contributed mightily to this performance. Got a vital try in the nervy win over Halifax last weekend. But got Castleford to this grand final. Aaron Smith now. So he'll be enjoying this. A chance maybe to prove a point or two. When he returns to Super League. If he returns to Super League with this Castleford side, that's the... The big unknown, of course, is how they're going to organise things. Davis puts the kick in for Price to chase. Oh, and Price, I think, has knocked that ball on. Yeah, he was offside anyway. But again, the quality of the standoff, Brad Davis, realising that the speed of this man to be used to full effect. He knocked it on anyway, as far as I'm concerned, but uh, the referee had already awarded the penalty he's done his part and you can go through the entire 17 in the Castleford colours they should stand proud again Whitehaven give this ball a bit of air David Seeds their lone try scorer is tackled and he's worked hard throughout well he's got a great loyalty to the club of course Seeds 12 seasons there. Joel Penny. Oh, a little flip out the back from Penny. Last it was, came up with a mistake. You've got to try things. They know that. Flick it and hope. Back inside. Can't take it on. Probably can't catch it because Adrian Vowles was prowling all over him as soon as the ball came in. Another factor of today, three games have been played here in Witness. And I must say, the camaraderie the team spirit that's been offered to each other it has been superb well the Castleford supporters preparing to celebrate a grand final success Regal Trophy was the last success they had to celebrate this stature and this means so much to the club Frank Wateen, still going big, Frank Wateen, he could have gone all the way then, I think he was just facing the wrong direction, if he turned round he would have realised how close the try line was. Hasn't been near that for a while. Well done. Well done, Aaron. He hasn't, well, you do him an injustice, he has on five occasions this season, they've lost that ball. And now, oh, great stuff. Carl Sice, no, Ganson, I think, will call it back. No advantage. So they've taken the first knock on. No advantage, shot put. Look at that effort there. Picks him up, takes him back in the end goal. And that's Michael Platt again. Yes. Just focused on defence. He was last year's National League Young Player of the Year, Michael Platt, and he's just had to reshape his career a bit because he had experienced Super League with Salford and experienced uh, relegation. Sometimes the best players, Bill, they take a step back for, backwards before they come forwards in the development and uh, as a young player that might be the case with him. You've got pace, you can't give somebody that. You can teach them where to stand, you can improve their skills. You can't make somebody quick if they aren't. I must say that with the game well and truly over, did you see the tackle? Adrian Vowles hit on Ryan Tandy. It was all fair and square. Oh, that's just about sums it up. You remember that Regal Trophy 1994 final? No, I don't you? remember it, Bill. I don't remember it. <laughs> I remember missing about 30 tackles and letting 10 tries in. It becomes habit forming, doesn't it? <laughs> It was for me. David Fatiolo for just sort of really summing up the frustration that Whitehaven must feel from not having themselves done themselves justice. Hats off the Castleford Tigers for a, an immaculate performance virtually, but Whitehaven would go away feel feeling that they haven't done themselves justice. After to get this far, the end of a season, the chance was there. Yes, I, I would agree. I mean, sometimes if you play to your best and you lose, you're disappointed, but ultimately you can accept it. It's a long time now for Whitehaven to have to live with this performance. At the end of the day, it is only a game, Steve-O. 
We do accept that. There's far more important things in life than a game of rugby league, but they'd be disappointed nevertheless, especially their fans. Big effort for them coming down here. Big hopes and a big disappointment. There for the second year in succession, it is very hard to swallow. But the quality, you need it to succeed in finals. And they've come up short yet again, but they've won eight straight coming into this game. They have every reason to feel optimistic. I used to have a quip, you know, years ago, Bill, and then it, all the hair just went just like that. It's not what has gone on before, it's what you finish up with. And Whitehaven have finished up with absolutely nothing. <laughs> They've lost that ball in the tackle, touch judges on. Howard Hill, a bit okay, high from William Blanche. Okay, I would love to have your time. The clock running down. Oh, and Howard Hill felt that. A slap in the face from Blanche. Just for a moment, Casaford are on the back foot. Summers charging it forward. Well, Castleford, the supporters behind those posts that uh, Whitehaven are currently attacking, on their feet, ready to salute their heroes. But there could be an opportunity for Calvert to at least get his name on the board, and he does. Ironic cheers from the Whitehaven fans. And an indication there maybe of what Whitehaven are about when yeah. they put it together. When they're going forward, they're getting a quick play of the ball, guy jumping out of dummy half, good skills, good speed, but you must be going forward in the middle of the field. Fatih Lofi did it on that occasion, but they failed to do it often enough in the first half when this really was a contest. And Calvert's try, although a good one, is in vain. Come on, Haven. Well, it's a little late for that. It'll be a long drive up the M6 into the Lake District area. But they will rise again. There is always hope. They have a very good coach. And they have a pretty decent junior development. Though there is some concern in that area in regards to the opposition code. And let's hope that people up in Cumbria can... Uh, can stop the flow. Nanin has missed that conversion. But Haven have eight points. Cass 36. And they are going to win this grand final. There is Craig Calvert. Just a, a glimpse of the pace he has. But that's no consolation for the Haven supporters. At least, well, it's no consolation the fact that they won the the league leaders trophy the first in their history but that's no consolation at all the big prize was promotion to super league and that is going to go to the castleford tigers just look at that effort there they've kicked off five or six of the castleford players set up as quickly as they could to get down there always a start to the match they deserve it, Bill. You can't take anything away. They deserve their win. I'm feeling the better side when they had to be here today. And uh, full congratulations to the Castleford Club. And also, just down the road at Wakefield, I'm sure that they are extremely happy that the Derby game will be on yet again in Super League in 2006. The clock counting down. The last action of this grand final here at the Holton Stadium. And it's the Castleford Tigers who are celebrating comprehensive victory over Whitehaven by 36 points to 8, which means that the Castleford Tigers are back in Super League. Just one year out, and it was a bitter shock to them when they were relegated for the first time in their history. So much at stake to get back here at the first attempt. And these players, after a nervy end to the season, have done it. A very nerve-jangling end to the season. They were unbeaten in the league until early July. Then they lost 17-16 at Rochdale. They were beaten in the Northern Rail Cup final by Hull KR. They lost at Rovers and Haven in August. And then that playoff defeat at Haven two weeks ago. It looked as though the momentum was with 
Whitehaven, but not a bit of it today because it has belonged to the Castleford Tigers and Whitehaven's dream of reaching the rugby league elite has been shattered by what you have to say was an immaculate Castleford performance. Well, they've played and impressed today. They'll need to improve all for next year. I'm sure the club have got targets on that. And uh, I'm very confident they will improve. Some good young players. Supplement that with some experience. And I can't wait to sample the atmosphere down at the jungle as soon as Super League 11 gets underway. It will be fantastic. And I must also pay credit to these Castleford fans who, despite the fact that they were relegated, and pushed down into the lower division. They stuck by their Tiger players. Well, it's been a great month already for the Henderson brothers. Ian of the Bradford Bulls is in the Super League Grand Final next weekend at Old Trafford. Brother Andy has already won a Grand Final. He's the Castleford Tigers captain. He's with Rod. Hendo! Andrew, well done. Tell us what that means to Captain Castle back to Super League. Oh, mate, it's uh, a great feeling, you know. I know that the, uh, there's such a tradition at Castleford being, you know, such a strong club. It's been around for a long time, and, um, you know, it's disappointing to see that they were, you know, down in Division 1 this year, but it's just uh, a great achievement and a great feeling, and I feel so proud to represent the town, represent the players, and uh, to go take us back up to Super League where we belong. Were you surprised how comfortable it was? Very surprised. Um, I mean, we had a game plan going into the game, which I'm glad for once we stuck with it for the full 80. Um... You know, Whitehaven have been a great side all year. Um, they totally deserve to be here in the grand final. But, you know, it's like I said all week in the papers, it's, it's one game. Um, it can go either way, and fortunately for us, we produced the goods on the day. You're a big week for your family as well with Ian next weekend in the uh, grand final itself. Oh, look, very proud of my younger brothers to be in the Super League grand final. And uh, proud that my other brother, Kevin, has got to start with Wakefield next season. And it looks like all three of us will be... Uh, Starting our stuff in Super League next year. Well then, Andy. Let's bring in the man who mastermind Casper's return to Super League. A very emotional Dave Woods. Dave, well done. Yeah. What does that mean to you? Uh, it means everything. We've, uh, we've worked really hard this year. You know, everyone wrote us off. Everyone said we're too young. You know, not good enough full time. Should be winning easily. The fact is, there's some great sides in this league, and and we've had a battle all year, and and they showed today what a, a true champion side they are. So full credit to White They've been tremendous all year. I knew we had the players there. They've got a lot of talent and uh, really proud of the boys. Listen to that behind you. Amazing, isn't it? Fans are unbelievable. You know, the fans have stuck with us all year, you know. Uh, we've, we've copped some baggins, but they're, they're true fans. And, and you know, like they've, they're back in Super League now where they de belong. You've got to go and pick the trophy up, but I can't uh, let you go without asking, do you know what's going to be happening next season? Will you still be a customer, Dave? Mate, I hope so. It's not in my hands. It's in the board's hands. Um, you know, I tried to divert a lot of the attention off the players during the week. I came out with that, but uh, at the end of the day, the board will make the right decision, the, you know, the right one for the club, and uh, hopefully I'll be involved there. Enjoy the rest of today, Dave. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. Very much. Well, there it is. That's what all the fuss has been about this afternoon, but more importantly, more important even than that piece of silverware. It's a return to Super League for the Castleford Tigers. Prior to 2005, they had never been out of the top flight of Rugby League. Now they are back. And Brad Davis, at 37 years of age, and Philip Hindle, president of the Rugby League, will be a very proud man as well, closely associated with the Castleford Club. Brad Davis is the man of the match. And that trophy, I think, the man of the match trophy, was won in the first half. Terrific, terrific scenes and great for Castleford, Darren Abram, that they are back. And as all the banners we've seen already today, back where they belong, they believe. It is. It's, it's all about a big day. And, you know, the Castleford players have played 100%. Not saying the Whitehaven players have played 100%, but they, they've not played to their ability and what they have done all season. Um, Castleford, big guns, Brad Davis, Platt, the Wattonies, they have top games, error-free games and they've come up with the goods, and that's what it's all about. Forget about what's gone on, forget about who's won the Arriva and who's won the National League. It's who's in this final and who comes up with it, gets that pot of gold, and that pot of gold this year has gone to Castleford. The hard work starts now, the easy work's done now. <laughs> they can celebrate, the directors have got to meet, the board's got to meet, 
and it's just a relief for everybody involved with Castleford that's talking from experience from last year but the hard work really starts now on recruitment. I know that you were in the office first thing on the Monday morning after the league grand final victory last year. The difficult work does begin. This is a young side though, Castleford. It's a very, very young side and uh, they've stuck with them and they're back. But by the sound of things, there's a question mark over this fellow's future. He said hopefully he'll be involved in Super League next year. And I just wonder whether Steve McCormack will believe that he has taken Whitehaven as far as he can. He left two years to the grand final and twice they have come up empty. Up they come, Castleford, to pick up the LHF National League trophy. And as I say, what a moment it is for Philip Hindle, president of the Rugby Football League, former chairman of the club, and he's shaking the hands of every single one of those players. And they're about to receive the trophy, or at least their captain, is Andrew Henderson. And with one brother at Wakefield, Andrew at uh, Castleford, and Ian Han Henderson at Bradford, all being well, all three of the Henderson clan, as he said, will be trotting around in the Super League next year. Great moments for these players. They've worked hard for them. Great moments for the coach as well. It's been a long, long time, and oh dear, it's a knock-on as far as the trophy is concerned. And uh, Jane Fenwick, well, she can drop it, of course. She's head of marketing at the, uh, the sponsors. So she, if anyone's allowed to drop the trophy, she is. There we go. And now she hands it over to Andrew Henderson. And in 2005, they are the LHS National League champions. And they make it through to Super League in 2006. Great scenes, great moments. These supporters have stuck with the club. Steve, I know you're still up on the gantry. You're watching this from on high. Fantastic, fantastic scenes and a great moment for Castle for Tigers, this. It certainly is, and uh, it is fully deserved. Brad Davis, as you say, 37 years of age. Absolute total control of this game. Shows you the quality and character is one thing, but experience is another. The fans have been quite superb. You've already mentioned, and I've already brought it to light in regards that they stuck behind them. Thick and thin, when they lost the cup to Hull KR at Blackpool, it was all doom and gloom. It looked as though they were going down a spiral, but they have fought their way back, and the way that they have finished off Whitehaven today has been nothing short of superb. Congratulations to the Tigers. Welcome back to Super League. Indeed so, and it really was a welcome that was organised prior to the start of the second half, because really, Darren Abram, you know, when we, we look back and reflect on this year's LHF National League Grand Final. It was won by half-time. Yeah, I mean, Brad Davis and the Castleford players, obviously you heard Henderson say they had a game plan. Um, as I spoke about before, the game plan was to kick into corners, keep Whitehaven under pressure, work hard from that marker defence and your A and B spots moving in very tight and keeping Whitehaven down there. And it proved that if you do that, you get the results. And then the result come on the back of, as I say, the hard work by the forwards, the kicking game from Brad Davis but also the backs being patient and not calling for the ball when the ball was not needed to get out there. And it was a great team performance by Castleford. The, the big business, the hard work now starts because they've got to assemble a squad that can survive in Super League next year. And it won't be easy. It's very difficult. I mean, the, the best part of it is now that two teams have come down. So there's 50 odd players knocking about. Whether then 50 odd players are good enough to go into Super League, whether the youngsters here are, are good enough to take them and survive next year, because that's what it's about. It'll probably be about surviving next year and then building for the year after. You know, the directors, the chief executive will have goals on what they want to do, and it's whether the club, players, supporters can achieve all that, and it's, it's very hard work to go into certain stages. Darren knows what he's talking about. Still, thank you for being with us, and thank you, Darren, for coming back and being with us as well. All the very best to Castleford. Bye-bye. What a beautiful day.
as we now know, Leeds and Bradford will be joined in the Super League next season by Castleford Tigers. And we're delighted that coach Dave Woods and Brad Davis, the man of the match against Whitehaven, are with us tonight. Yes, thanks very much for coming in and bringing the all-important trophy. I mean, Dave, it was, it was a spectacular performance, first of all, against Whitehaven. You just outplayed them. Yeah, it was, uh, it was really good. We, uh, we worked really hard during the week and, and everything we, we practised um, really came off in that first 20 minutes and we just kicked on from there. Really came off for you as well, Brad, because you seemed inspired yesterday. No, it was always um, at the start of the season we set ourselves a goal of achieving Super League status for the club and you know that, that was ultimately what we were going to be tested against and uh, we really came through. You two must be heroes in Castleford. Have you been out and about? Have you had any of the, re the reaction? since the game? Uh, last night when we got back it was overwhelming the, the amount of people that were there to greet us when we got back off the bus um, it was just incredible you know mm. there was that many people there uh, today we've been back down to the ground but um, I, th I think a lot of the, the fans are still in bed asleep but um, As you wish you were I think don't you? Yeah, I th yeah we wouldn't <laughs> mind being but um, yeah we haven't really been out in the town much I, I haven't Brad may have today but uh, Yeah just I a couple of much. hours sleep for both of you last night wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's catching up on you a little bit. Definitely. Looking ahead now you've got a you've got a big step ahead of you haven't you? We have yeah we've got a lot of work to do um, on and off the field we've got a lot of work um, you know we want to we want to be back in or well, we're back in Super League but we want to be there and for a long time be competitive and, and uh, mix it with all the, uh, the big sides there. Well, let's hope you're involved, Dave. And you, Brad, as well, moving on to the coaching side of things, probably. Well, hopefully that's an ambition of mine. Uh, but, you know, at the moment it's just about celebrating uh, back into Super League status, which, is, as Dave echoed, it's so important for the town. Yeah. But, you know, it, the hard work really begins now. We really have to have a three- to five-year plan. And, and like Dave said, we need to be comp competitive first in Super League, remain in Super League and then build up and uh, they're exciting times ahead at Castleford. They certainly are. Thanks again for coming Thank in. You. Congratulations once more. Thank you. Thank you. A win over Whitehaven. It's not just a victory for the team, it's for the whole of the community in Castleford. With the now as man of the match, Brad Davis. It is, isn't it? I mean, that, th that community took such a blow this time last year. Oh, yeah, I think it hurt not just the players who were part of that, that campaign last season, but the whole town itself, you know, it really hurt them. and. Uh, they couldn't understand why we got in that position in the first place, but what a way to bounce back, you know. We, we, it was just a fantastic result yesterday. And the fact is that you weren't favourites, you know, Whitehaven were the favourites for that. You obviously had a game plan, you played really well. Nobody could be faulted in any shape or form, could they? Oh, no, I thought our forwards were absolutely outstanding and laid a platform that myself and Andrew Henderson could exploit. Um, but I, I think it's just one of, those thing, one of those days in sport where you know, Whitehaven probably had their worst, saved their worst performance for the grand final and we saved our best performance and that's why the scoreline indicated, you know, a, such a, a, a great result for us. Now the number six for Cassifer, this 54-year-old, had a pretty good game, Brad. Uh, take us through this try. Well, <laughs> you're not well 54, I just, I yeah, I'm not 54, <laughs> but, you know, I saw Joel Penny looking to pass the ball and I just gambled on a, a possible interception and uh, once I collected it, you know, panic really struck in my eyes because <laughs> I realised I had 50 metres left to run and Luckily for me, there was no one chasing because if they did say, they, uh, they probably would have got me down. But it was just a fantastic feeling and, and really just kept the momentum of a, a fantastic first half. We know, of course, that you know, this is great news. Castleford Tigers uh, back in Super League. We know it's going to be difficult, though. The, the problem is you've got to be able to strengthen the side because there's such a gap between this league and Super League. There's a huge gap between, uh, between even the bottom of Super League to the National League level and uh, we're under no illusions at Castleford that really now the hard work begins and we're behind the eight, the eight ball as a start because um, you know everyone's really started to make their signings so the board and the club itself have to be uh, very proactive in, in making signings very quickly. Now you're not going to play another game but you are staying with the club? Well hopefully, uh, it, that's undecided yet, I'm, I've, I've yet to have talks with uh, Richard Wright and the board but you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that in some capacity I'll, I'll still be around at Castleford. I'm sure Cast fans would uh, want you to do that. Brad, well done. Many congratulations. Thanks very much.